What's up everybody, Jeremy Weiss here with Weiss Tech Hockey and uh, this is our first video in our philosophy section of our hockey coaches training course. And in this video what I wanted to talk about is the hockey development pyramid. Now you may or may not have seen uh, something that resembles this hockey development pyramid in the past. Um, there are, I've seen more complex versions of it, I've also seen more simplified versions of it. This is the version of it that I really like as I'm thinking through um, you know, what I'm planning on doing with my own, with my own teams and my own players. So uh, you can see it's, it's pretty basic, there are four tiers. At the bottom tier of the pyramid, uh, we have individual skills. Now hockey is one of those sports that it, it's not nearly as, as friendly to newcomers as other sports are. Um, in other sports, you know, if, if, if you're generally athletic, you can run and catch a ball, um, a lot of times you can pick up that sport and with a little bit of practice, get pretty good at it. Um, not so with hockey. Hockey, you, you really have to have a strong foundation of individual skills, primarily skating. Um, if you're really going to ever do anything with the sport. So that's why I put uh, individual skills at the very baseline of that pyramid because really individual skills is what's going to uh, lead into all of the other stuff. So skating, stick handling, um, shooting, those are all individual hockey skills that must be developed, must have a strong focus, especially in early years of play. Uh, then you've got team skills. Now the way I de define team skills as I'm, you know, as I'm thinking through things in my own mind is team skills are kind of a, a combination of two or more individual skills. So let's take example for, or let's take for example gap control. Gap control is a team skill. Uh, it combines multiple individual skills. So you have to be able to skate forward and backwards uh, to be able to control the gap properly as a defenseman. Uh, you also have to be able to pivot. So that's pivoting to close down the gap and then also pivoting um, as a player, if a player starts taking you wide. So you've got to be able to, uh, to do it. That, those are at least four skills that we've got right there. Uh, and there are others as well. Um, but you know, balance, agility, skating, those all play into the one, in, or the one team skill of gap control. So team skills, uh, there are many team skills. Mo all team skills are combinations of uh, two or more individual skills. Then we've got team systems. Uh, team systems, this is where most of our focus is going to be on this course. Team systems is basically just the X's and O's. So positioning, uh, where you should be where you know, in, in a given situation. So where should I be if the puck's in the corner? Uh, where should I be if the puck's at the point? Um, these are all the different positional X's and O's that uh, you know, make up a, a well-rounded, solid hockey team. Now, in order to be able to complete your responsibilities as a player, um, with team systems, you obviously have to have a strong base of individual skills and team skills. So if, if you're if you're in the right position but can't complete the task at hand, so for example, maybe a defenseman knows that he's supposed to be backing up uh, and he's generally in the right position but he doesn't know how to pivot and go with the forward when he takes him wide, well then uh, even though he's in the proper position, because he's lacking those team skills of gap control and pivots, uh, he's not going to be able to complete his task. Um, within his uh, his responsibilities, so team systems are a combination of uh, you know positioning, where to be, and then what to do when you're there. And uh, to be able to do that, you have to have strong individual and team skills. Then you've got team strategy. Now, team strategy is kind of where it all comes and com combines into one uh, one sort of element, I guess you could say. It combines players and coaches. Generally, the coaches are going to be the ones controlling the team strategy. Um, so basically. You know, a coach is going to be the one that decides what forecheck to use against what team. Uh, so if a team has a really, uh, you know, a really well-rounded, solid defensive end uh, that controls the puck well, well, what for what what forecheck would work well against a, a strong handling uh, defenseman, uh, a strong puck handling defenseman? So a coach is going to determine which systems to use against which teams, and then it's up to the players to execute. So that's where team strategy comes into play. Um, so that's the basic hockey development pyramid. Those are the kind of that's that's the mindset that I'm usually in as I'm thinking through development and uh, where my teams and my players need to go. Um, here are a few examples of some of the individual skills. I'm not going to go through all of these, but you can see we've got a whole lot of stuff on skating skills, um, which includes forward skating, backward skating, stops and starts, pivots, um, you know, crossovers, mohawks, power turns, all that good stuff. Puck, hand, puck handling skills, passing shooting. So these are all individual skills that need to be developed. And these are kind of the, the bare bones of hockey skills. Uh, then you can see as we get to team skills, these are where we start combining individual skills. So that's where you have you know your defensive tactics, gap control like we already mentioned, um, force versus contain, angling, checking, pinning, 
uh, how to play one-on-one, -on -one, a two-on-one, three-on-twos, support tactics. Uh, you've got offensive tactics, um, triangulation, cycling, all that, all that good stuff, neutral zone tactics, and back checking. So those are your team skills. And uh, like I said, each of those generally combines two or more uh, individual skills to be able to complete those team skills. Then you've got your team systems. Now, like I said, this is where we're going to focus most of our energy on this course. Um, defensive zone systems, offensive zone systems, neutral zone systems, special teams. Uh, that's your power play penalty kill, obviously. Um, so these are the X's and O's, and uh, this is where we're going to determine where our players should be in a given situation. Then we've got team strategy. We kind of talked about this already, but uh, choosing a forecheck, choosing a penalty kill, choosing a power play, uh, personnel management. So how are you going to make the most out of your top players? Uh, how are you going to make the most out of your uh, bottom players? Those are That's important stuff to know how to do as well. Um, bench management, that's uh, how to make sure that you're right, the right players are on the ice at the right time. Uh, intimidation, fighting, when and when not to fight. Uh, like it or not, that still plays a part in the game. And uh, especially at the higher levels of play, that definitely comes into a, a strategy, a philosophy. Um, utilizing your team's strengths, compensating for your team's weaknesses. Coaching strategy, when and when not to snap. Sometimes, uh, sometimes coaches need, or sometimes teams need a kick in the butt. Sometimes they need to be coddled. So uh, it's up to you to determine what they need and when. Uh, and that's definitely part of the strategy. Um, and analyzing opponents' weaknesses and exploiting them. So there's a lot. There's there's probably more that could be slotted into each of these topics. But in general, this is this is these are the the things that I'm thinking through as I'm developing a team. Uh, so what's most important? And that's a great question. Where should your energy be focused in the hockey development pyramid? Uh, the answer is it depends. That's, I know that's a little bit of a cop-out answer, but it's, it's really true. Uh, it depends on the age of your team, the skill level of your team, the time of season. So, um, you know, what, what needs to be worked, out, worked on at a certain point in time. And uh, these are all things that vary from team to team. And this is where your skill as a coach uh, becomes very important because you are the one that needs to determine what needs to be worked on at, uh, at any given point in time, which is why it's good to generally create a bit of a roadmap before the season starts. So you can kind of say, here's where we want to get to by the end of the season, and uh, here's how I hope to get there. And uh, obviously there will be some adjustments along the way, but in general, if you can keep the ship going in the, in the right direction, then that uh, will, will really help throughout the course of the season. Um, I like to use a bit of a 70-30 rule, and this is a very sliding scale 70-30. Um, it, it, it is adjustable and does have to be adjusted as the season goes, um, depending on how your team's prog uh, progress is coming. But the 70-30 rule basically is at the beginning of the season, especially for the younger players, 70% of the skills, um, or 70% of your practices, 70% of the time in each practice should be working on uh, you know, individual and team skills, and 30% on team, strat or team systems, team strategies. So, uh, you know, and then as the season progresses, by the end of the season, it's the opposite. So 70% of, of your time should be working on individual, or sorry, I'm getting myself confused here. 70% of the time should be on uh, team skills and team strategies, and uh, sorry, team systems and team strategies, and then 30% on the bottom two tiers, individual skills and team skills. So like I said, that's a sliding scale. At the older age groups, it's uh, not nearly as, as extreme as 70-30, but, um, you know, definitely at the beginning of the season, the point is at the beginning of the season, you're going to be focusing more on individual and team skills. At the end of the season, you're going to be focusing more on team systems and team strategies. Um, in my opinion, I think that uh, good coaches should be able to develop both. A lot of coaches have an either-or opinion or an either-or philosophy where you know I, I can't focus on too much system because that will rob the rob the individual skill development. Um, I don't think that that's true. I think you can do both. I think you should do both. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about different ways that you may be able to, uh, to accomplish that and focus on skill development and systems at the same time, even with young players. So that's, uh, that's my humble opinion on this. And uh, as we progress through the course, we'll talk a little bit more about this. But um, that is our, uh, our first video on philosophy.